Well, our next guest is a registered nurse and a VCU grad. Deep down, she always had a passion for writing, so she put her pen to paper to create her first historical novel inspired by a trip to England. The result is her new book, Girl on the Golden Coin. We welcome Marcy Jefferson of Virginia this morning. Congratulations on this debut novel. Thank you, Jess, and thank you for having me here today. It's our pleasure. You know, we said that the trip to England inspired the story, but I have a funny feeling there were a lot of pieces that came into place before putting it all together. That's true. You know, I lived here. I lived in New Yorktown twice. As an Air Force brat, I kind of came and went. And I think really that's where my history love sort of sparked while living here here um, with all the tales of the Revolutionary War. Um, and you know, when you study American history far back enough, you kind of get into British history. And so that's really where I started studying the history of England and the monarchies. Always an area of interest for you. And then of course, being in the area, as you said, really sparked that. Um, how do you make that transition or how did you not do that to begin with? You became a registered nurse. <laughs> well, my mother actually majored in history and I guess didn't like teaching it too much because she encouraged me to go into nursing um, because it's just a little bit more practical. And I guess it really just was too much of a passion for me to stay away from because I came back to it after doing uh, some traveling in England um, and learning about the Royal Stuart family. Um, I kind of had to come home and study all about them instead of the Revolutionary War. I came home and learned about um, Charles Stuart and um, this lovely Francis. Let's talk about the story specifically. Girl on the Golden Coin, what is this about? The story is about Frances Stewart. She was a beautiful royalist exile in 1660s um, England and actually starts in France. She's exiled because of the English Civil Wars. Her side, the royalists, they lost that war. That war ended with the beheading of Charles I of England. and. Um, she was therefore exiled with Charles II's court in France and um, they sort of wandered Europe for a while and when uh, England got tired of their Puritan ruler Oliver Cromwell um, they restored Charles II of England to the monarchy that's what we call the the restoration of monarchy in 1660 and this just reverses her fortunes she's now restored to favor and she gets an opportunity to join the French court where Louis the 14th the Sun King um, the King of France uh, she soon catches his eye so putting all of this together, what's it like now working as a historical author? Oh gosh, it sort of consumes all of my time. Ask my very patient family. Um, I just research all the time. I read a lot. I spend a lot of time holed up in my office doing the study that is required because I don't have a history degree or a literature degree. I'm a nurse, as you mentioned, and so I kind of have to compensate for that with a lot of independent study. But it's fun for you. Oh, I love it. It's not, a, it's not really a chore. It's just something I really enjoy. It just takes up a lot of time. I had the opportunity to meet your lovely family oh, this you. morning. <laughs> and I think they are patient, but at the same time, they get to enjoy some of the fun. You were talking about uh, one of the stays that you're making here in a spot that you'll visit actually has lineage to the story. Yes, it does. Actually, the Innett Warner Hall was speaking there on Wednesday, and they, uh, the, the plantation goes back to the 1640s, and the um, founder of that plantation, Augustine Warner, was granted that plantation by one of the characters in the novel actually. So Marcy, how do you balance uh, re retelling a story and using that history with some interpretive flair? It's a very fine balance. I want to stay true to the spirit of the characters because everyone, except for two, all 60 characters are actual historical figures and so I really felt um, compelled to be true to them. Um, but at the same time, you have to kind of draw the lines and kind of fictionalize the, the unanswered questions in between the facts and make it intriguing. And at the same time, if some of the decision making isn't necessarily what you would do as an individual, it must be really challenging not to write those decisions. Well, um, fortunately, every single conversation that took place between Kings and his mistresses were not exactly recorded, so there's plenty of room for interpretation and um, dramatization, you could say. And even though you stay very true and you're retelling uh, these, these historical um, stories, how much of an escape is it for you putting it together? Well, you know, the research is a little bit too much of an escape. Sometimes I get a little carried away and follow a tangent a little too far. Like I said, it takes up a lot of time. That's probably partially my fault because it's a little fun. Um, but it is nice to sort of envision um, the romantic sort of clothes and um, you know galloping off into a palace. But um, there's plenty of reality there to kind of balance that sort of romanticized idea of these 
um, fictional stories, these royal mistresses and these castles, they were, there's a little reality in there too. And you're balancing that reality, that practical reality, you're still a part-time nurse, yes. and you're probably working on your next story, I would imagine. Oh, it's in the works right now, it's almost done, it'll be do here this summer so I've got a lot of work to do. Oh, fantastic. A lot of history for you rooted here in Virginia. Thanks yes, for being back Virginia. with us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's we're going to share some information so you have the chance to meet Marcy Jefferson while she's in town promoting her brand new book, Girl on the Golden Coin. Her first appearance is tonight at 630 at Fountain Bookstore in Shaco Slip and then she'll be in Williamsburg tomorrow night at 7 at the Books A Million, 1252 Richmond Road.